I counsel myself and all of you, inshallah, to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, uh, the saying that the fear of Allah is the beginning of wisdom. Uh, and wisdom is the ability to act uh, appropriately in any given situation. And this is something that unfortunately is lacking uh, today. Um, when you look at the conditions of the world, you see that very often people do the opposite of what the actual situation entails. So the word hikmah, which is wisdom, is the word that the Quran uses for sunnah. Because the Prophet ﷺ, in his sunnah, he always does the right thing. And in the few times when he didn't do the right thing and he was abuked by Allah, he actually was doing the right thing, but it was not the best thing. And that's why he always does the best thing. So his, his censure from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Abbas wa tawalla and Yahu al-Ama, his censure from Allah when he was rebuked in the Quran by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was because the hikmah in that situation was to be speaking to the one that wanted to hear the message and not the one that was uninterested in the message. One was wealthy and the other was poor and so the Prophet ﷺ was giving his attention to the wealthy man hoping that he would strengthen Islam. And so the Prophet ﷺ was rebuked there. So that's an example, a rare example when his hikmah was readjusted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the Prophet, his his tawfiq from Allah is that he was always hakim. The one that's given wisdom is given a great good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala huwa alladhi ba'ath fir ummiyina rasoolan yatru alayhi ayati wa alayhim ayati wa yuzakkihim wa yu'allimuhum al-kitaba wa al-hikma that he's the one who sent amongst the Gentiles, amongst the unlettered people, a prophet and he sent him to recite his verses to purify them and to teach the book and the wisdom, the hikmah. Remember, the women of the Prophet's household were told to remember the blessing of the Quran being revealed in their house and the hikmah and the sunnah of the Prophet. And this is what Imam Shafi'i in his famous book uh, about usul al-fiqh says the hikmah is the sunnah. So you can have knowledge, but knowing how to apply the knowledge is the wisdom. That's the hikmah. And that's the difference between those who might know the hukum of Allah as a text and those who know when the hukum of Allah is applicable. That's wisdom. And this is where the Prophet ﷺ was constantly teaching his sahaba. The Prophet ﷺ, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that whatever you, the Prophet has given you, take it, and whatever he's prohibited of you, avoid it. The Prophet ﷺ said, a time will come when a satiated man will be sitting on a couch reclining, and he'll hold up the book of Allah, and he will say, whatever's in this book, follow it. And whatever it says is halal, make it halal. Whatever it says is haram, make it haram. And he said, he won't mention my sunnah. And this is a miracle of the Prophet ﷺ because the people that reject the sunnah, never in the history of Islam did any group reject the sunnah until this, these latter days when people rejected the idea that the Prophet ﷺ came with wahi. مَا يَنْتَقُ عَنَ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ وَحْيِ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ he doesn't speak from his caprice, from his whims, from his passion. This is revelation being revealed. If you look at the Prophet's life, every single thing that he did after the revelation is recorded. Because how many conversations do we have? We don't record them. They go off into the air. It's just wind coming out of us and we have maybe an enjoyable conversation, we might even have a wise conversation. But when the conversation's over, the words are gone. We might not even remember them, and over time, they're simply gone. But every single thing the Prophet ﷺ said, Sahaba were memorizing. They were recording it. Abu Huraira, 
People say, how could Abu Huraira relate over 5,000 hadith? He was only with the Prophet for two and a half years. This is one of the people that attack uh, the hadith. How could he relate over 5,000? Because Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu spent his entire life collecting hadith. It wasn't just during the lifetime of the Prophet. And in many of them, he doesn't say, I heard the Prophet say, he just says the Prophet said. And he doesn't have to say where he got it from because he's a thiqa and the person he took it from, another sahabi, was a thiqa. Aisha radiallahu relates over 2,000 hadith. So the hadith were preserved. Now one of the tragedies of the time we're living in is historically the hadith were the domain of the ulama. There were small books written for common people, uh, but overall the hadith were in a tradition of isnad. You had to study hadith with scholars and they would explain to you. Ibn Wahab bin one of the greatest scholars of Islam, he said, أَكْثَرْتُ مِنَ الْحَدِيثِ حَتَّى تَحَيَّرْتِ رَحِمُ اللَّهُ مَارِكٌ وَلَيْثِ لَوْ لَهُمَا لَهَلَكْتُ I learned so many hadith, and this is one of the rijal of al-Bukhari. He said, I learned so many hadith, I became confused. And he said, if it wasn't for Malik and Layth, I would have perished. Out of confusion. I went to Malik and he would say, take this hadith. Don't take that hadith. Take this hadith. That hadith is no good. That hadith is no longer practiced. And, and he sorted it out for him. Malik knew over 100,000 hadith and yet his muwatta only has less than 700 hadith. He learned over 100,000 hadith. So now you have people opening up the book or worse going on Google or Maktab al-Shamila looking at hadith and then they get confused and then they confuse others. And one of the groups that the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cursed on the throne and the angels amminu alayh, the angel said, Ameen. Allah said, La'an Allah, and the angel said, Ameen. Is mudallil al masakin, the one who leads simple people astray. The one who leads simple people astray. So, this is one of the problems, the calamities of our time. If you look at the hadith of the Prophet, the Prophet said in, in, in hadith that are sound, Malik relates it, Tirmidhi and others, he said, Taraktu fikum, ma tamasiktum. Bihima لَن تَضِلُّ مِن بَعْدِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَالسُنَّةِ There's two things that I left you. If you hold to them, you will not go astray. The Book of Allah and my way. His way is the wisdom. Because the Quran says that there came a light and a book. نُورٌ kitab. The light, you need the light to read the book. You can't read in darkness. The, the light is the Prophet He's the light that illuminates the book. Without the Prophet ﷺ, the book can become a source of people going astray. And every group in the history of Islam that went astray, they went astray with Qur'an and, and, and verses. They, they said this, this means this, this means that, and they interpreted it. They all used the same text and they went astray. But a normative tradition in Islam emerged and it was difficult to come out, there were many fabricated hadiths, they had to sort those out. They put all the hadiths, they collected them all. Now, the Prophet wasallam, he said, لَنْ يَشَدَّ الدِّينَ أَحَدٌ إِلَّا غَلَبًا This religion, إِنَّ هَذَا الدِّينَ مَتِينَ This is a tough religion. This is a, a tough religion. He said, لَنْ يَشَدَّ الدِّينَ أَحَدٌ أو لَنْ يُشَدَّ الدِّينَ أَحَدًا إِلَّا غَلَبًا no one will become an extreme in this religion except he will be overwhelmed. The Prophet ﷺ said, Halakan mutanatti'un. The zealots will perish. The zealots, he said it three times. Halakan mutanatti'un. Halakan mutanatti'un. Halakan mutanatti'un. The zealots will perish. The zealots will perish. The zealots will perish. He said, Iyakum al ghulu wa fiddin. Beware of extremism in your religion. He said, Al Qast, Al Qast, Tablughu. Moderation, moderation, and you will get to paradise. This is our Prophet. ﷺ. He said, Saddidu wa qaribu. Be upright and do the best you can. Muqaraba is attempt to get close with, with, get close to Allah. Do your best. 
Bashiru wa la tunafiru. Give glad tidings to people. Give them glad tidings. Tahaman zalna alayka al-Quran li tashqa. We didn't reveal this Quran for you to be miserable. That's what the Quran said. We didn't reveal this Quran for you to be miserable. When one of the Amirs of the Prophet ﷺ, he got upset with his companions and, and, and they were told, you know, to obey the Amir. Sama'an wa ta'atan. You just obey the Amir, right? Innama kana qawla al-mu'minina idha du'u ila Allahi wa Rasuli liyahkuma bainahum. Right? If, if, if the believers are called to, to uh, for Allah and His Messenger to do, deliberate amongst them, then what do they say? Sama'an wa ta'ana. We hear and we obey. The Prophet ﷺ said, you know, he said, uh, Obey your ruler, walaw ta'amar alayka abdun. Even if it's a servant that becomes the ruler, obey him. So the Sahaba had this mentality of obedience. So they, they made their fire, the camp, because they're out like uh, on a, a trip. And he got angry at them. He said, you all have to jump in the fire. Wallahi, there are people today that if the Amir said, jump in the fire, they would jump in the fire. The Sahaba had brains. That's one of the blessings that Allah gave the Prophet companions that were intelligent. One of them said, we joined this religion to get out of the fire. <laughs> and so they refused to obey him. When they got back to the Prophet ﷺ, they told him, he said, لا تعتري مخلوقا في معصية الخالق. Don't obey a man if it means disobeying the creator of men. And Allah says, "La tulqi bi aydikum in tahruka." Don't destroy yourselves. So the Prophet said they were using their intellect. They didn't just say, "Oh, he's the Amir; we have to obey him." Ya khi, utkhul al nar. Qal al Amir, get in the fire. The Amir said we have to obey him. No, they use their intellects. Hikmah. This is hikmah. It's a gift from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Just to have wisdom, have intelligence. And that's why this religion has to have naql and aql. It has to have the transmission, the hadith, but it has to have the aql. There are hadiths that you read them and you know they can't be true. Just by intellect. Like the blind man that assassinated the woman. Because there's different riwayah about that. But if you, say, if you think that a blind man can crawl up a, a building, go into a room, not wake the children, according to the riwayah, and then kill the woman? No, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And there are many things like that. The, the, the early people gathered all the hadiths, and they put them, and they left them for the ulama to sort them out. Imam al-Bukhari, he put a hadith in there he doesn't believe. But he wanted to show people, I know the hadith, so the ulama would know. Uh, Sheikh Muhammad mentioned about burning the hadith that has, you cannot burn people. The same section in Al-Bukhari has a hadith saying one of the Sahaba burned somebody as a punishment. He wanted to show both are there. And I know both of them. And there are many examples of that. But this traditionally was the realm of the ulama. It was not the realm of the others. So the, everything that happens to us that is calamitous, and, and this is hard to swallow. This is a bitter pill to swallow. But everything that happens to us that is calamitous is from disobeying Allah and His Messenger. That's just, that's simply reality. And until we come to terms with that, we're, our faith is not sound. And that's why the Quran tells, you know, I was once traveling with Sheikh Abdullah bin Bayya, and I said, it's so interesting how the early people, they always looked to themselves for the problems. But modern people, they point to other things. And he said, كَانُوا عَلَى مَذْهَبْ قُلْ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِي أَنفُسِكُمْ they were on the madhab, say it's from your own souls. What happens to you comes from your own souls. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولُهُ وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيَحُكُمْ Obey Allah and obey His Messenger and don't differ amongst you. In, in, Munaza is like, don't, don't start fighting amongst you. Because you will fail. And your, your wind will go. What does the wind mean here? Quwa. Sayyidina Omar brought windmills to Medina. Because wind is power. Now we know the modern people are going towards wind. Because it's one of the most powerful forces on the planet. And you can derive energy from wind. Allah uses wind as a, a metaphor for energy. Your power will go 
if you start fighting amongst yourselves. We had, I mean, I'll just give you an example. The Ottomans defended for centuries, defended the Muslim lands. But then the Muslims turned on the Ottomans. They, they turned on them. There's reasons for it. And I'm not going to deny the, the Ottomans were very, at that time, they were, uh, they had lost their way as well. But they started allying with the colonialists who were promising them things and they went against their brother Muslims. The last attempt at defending Palestine, it'll bring tears to your eyes if you read the Ottoman, what they tried to do to defend Palestine. And we know that uh, Abdul Hamid would not sell Palestine to pay off all the debts of the Ottomans. Because he said, it's not mine to sell. But they were betrayed and people betrayed them and now we suffer the consequences of those people's mistakes. Because Allah says, khasa. Beware of calamities that don't just affect the guilty amongst you, they affect the innocent too. So people inherit the sins of people that went before them. In the Quran, Allah says, La ukhra. No soul bears the sins of another. Some of the ulama say, In dunya, they do. There's things your father does that you end up being disgraced by. And people will treat you badly because of the sins of your father. There's people that are born out of wedlock and they suffer from the sin of their father. They did nothing. That ayah is in the akhirah. You're not going to have any of the calamities or the sins of anybody else in akhirah. But in dunya, no. We bear the sins of other people. We bear the sins of other people. We're suffering today from choices people made 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 300 years ago. We're still suffering. This country is suffering because they didn't resolve the problem of slavery at the very start. It was a problem, they were dealing with it. But they didn't, so they had to have a civil war. We're still dealing with the problems of the civil war. Today, the Confederate flag. It happened over 150 years ago. People, we're still dealing with it. Syria is gonna be dealing with this civil war for generations. These things don't go away. So, we were given guidance we were given a covenant. When the covenant is abandoned, calamities happen. The Prophet ﷺ, his sunnah is the wisdom of this book. And if you look at our Prophet ﷺ, all you have to ask, you know, the Christians have this thing, would Jesus do it? What would Jesus do? They, they ask that. We, we, have, we should have the same criteria. Do you, do you think the Prophet ﷺ would tell people to strap bombs on them and go blow up people, innocent people? Is there anything in his sunnah that indicates that that would be a methodology that he would use? Because he was in Mecca. He could have had his sahaba go assassinate people. They were brave. Abu Dhar al-Ghifari was a Ghifari. Really, he was an incredibly brave man. Ibn Mas'ud was incredibly brave. These men were lions in battle. He could have said, go kill secretly, go sneak into so-and-so's house. He didn't do that. Why? Because that's not his methodology. What he does is out in the open. He never did anything by stealth other than to escape uh, because Allah commanded him to do. He didn't do things by stealth. He, he told people exactly what he was going to do and he did what he was going to do. He didn't shed blood. We have a cult of death. I was just reading a, a book the, uh, the other day and it was all about just death. Like these people love death more than life. And they quote all these early things. That in, in war, you want people to have that mentality. That's not the mentality that you want people to, to just have as human beings. The Prophet said, don't desire death. Let the tamanno al maut. The only time he asked for death is fitna. He said, when aratta bi ibadika, Take me to you out without civil strife. And he said that when Allah wants rahmah, this is a sahih hadith, when Allah wants rahmah for an ummah, He allows the Prophet who gives them the message to live to see them accept the message. But when He wants to punish an ummah, the Prophet who gives them the message sees their destruction in his own life. SubhanAllah. And so our Ummah, he wanted Rahmah for this Ummah. He, he, Allah wanted Rahmah for this Ummah. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, لا ترجعوا 
بعدي كفارة يضرب بعضكم رقاب بعض Don't go become kuffar after I gave you this Don't become kuffar How? By killing one another The ulama say the kuffar here means don't do the actions of people that don't believe in Allah as a rahmah because even sahaba fought so the wisdom of the Prophet ﷺ is something that we have lost in our community we've lost it and, and it's something that we need to regain and it's regained with knowledge because the Prophet ﷺ I was sent to teach it's regained with humility because he was the most humble of men and he said umirtun atawadha I was commanded to be humble hatta la يَفْخَرَ أَحَدٌ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٌ Until no one deems himself superior to any other. Because if the Prophet was humble, then who am I not to be humble? If the best of creation was humble, who am I not to be humble? The Prophet was commanded to be humble. He was, he, everything about him was wisdom. Everything he did, the way he ate, the way he sat, the way he walked. He walked briskly. He walked with intention. He didn't, he didn't meander. Uh, when he spoke, he spoke intelligently. He never, he never minced his words. He always spoke beautifully. If he joked, he joked with truth. And then he honored people. There's a beautiful hadith. Asma al-Ansariya came to the Prophet ﷺ. And she said, Ya Rasulullah, ana wafidatu nisa I was sent by the women. So they picked this woman, Asma al-Ansariya, to come and speak to her. And she said, Ya Rasulullah, ba'athakallahu ila rijali wa nisa Allah sent you to the men and the women. فَآمَنَّا بِكْ وَبِإِلَهِكَ We believed in you and in your God. وَنَرَى أَنَّ اللَّهَ فَضَّرَ الرِّجَالَ عَلَى النِّسَاء بِالْجَمْعِ وَجَمَعَاتِ But we see Allah has given some preference. The men, they get the, the, the jama' they get to gather like Jumu'ah. They get to go to Jumu'ah. They don't have problems. There's no little room in the back smelly or hidden with a curtain or something like that. No, they get to go in the big nice masjid, right? With jama'at, the women were encouraged to pray in the homes. They can pray in the masjid, but they were encouraged to pray in the home. The men go to the jama'at, and the jama'at, the Prophet said, is 27 times better. And then she said, وَبِلْ حَجِّ بَعْدَ الْحَجِّ And hajj after hajj. For the woman, it's mandub, she make the fard one time. And then it's because it's jihadun nisa. And then she said, and then jihad. They get jihad. Fi sabilillah. The Prophet ﷺ said, Husn al-tab. He said, Al-tafata ila ashabihi bi wajhihi kullihi. He looked at his companions with his entire face. And he said, Hal sam'atum ahsan mas'ala min mas'alati hadi imra'a. Have you heard a better question than the question that came from this woman? Like he's pointing out, look at the intelligence of this woman. And the Sahaba, they, they said, Wallahi ma kunna nadhunnu anna nisa. <laughs> we didn't think women could come up with things like this. <laughs> right? He's teaching them, no. Right? Shaqa'iq al They're your other halves, your better halves. Right? And then he said, Ya imra'a, listen woman. He said, Aqri as salam ila nisa khalfukum. Khalfuk, uh, Give salam to the women that you left, who sent you. And then he said, Wafhami, understand this. Husn taba'ulikunna ya'dudu dharika kullu. Just being a good companion <laughs> equals all of that that the men are doing. Just being a good companion equals all of that that the men are doing. It's amazing hadith. And that's who he was. He was somebody that elevated and honored people. Male, female, slave. You know, he had in his house Zayd ibn Haritha wa Usama bin Zayd. Zayd was very dark and Usama was light skinned. And some of the people they said, he's not the real son because he was married to uh, a dark woman also. So how is it that he's light-skinned and these two dark people, they had light-skinned boy? 
So one of the Banu Madrij came to his house and these people were known for like firasa in genetics. And they came into the room and Zayd and Osama were sleeping but their feet were outside. And the one, one set of feet was black and the other was white. And Madriji, he looked at the feet and he said, Hadihi aqdam min hadihi. These feet are from these feet. In other words, <laughs> this is the father of that. The Prophet called in Aisha, Aisha, Samati, did you hear that? He was so happy. He knew. But just to have that confirmation, he wanted Aisha to hear it, she would spread the news. Right. This is the Prophet always elevating people. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Musaratu was Salamu Ala Sayyidina wa Habibina Rasulillah. Allahumma Salli wa Salam wa Baraka Ala Sayyidina Muhammad in the Kakuts wa Kauruka Hak in Allah wa Malaika to you Salun Ala Nabi. Ya you had Ladina Amanu Salu Ali wa Salimu Taslima. Allahumma Salli wa Salam wa Baraka Ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa Ala Ali wa Sahabi wa Salam Taslim and Kathira. Allahumma Farajan and Muslimin fi Kuli Makan. اللهم فرج عن المسلمين يا أرحم الراحمين أنت أرحم الراحمين نسرك العافية يا الله اللهم عافينا وعاف المسلمين الأحياء منهم والميتين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم يا الله وحد صفوف المسلمين يا الله اللهم أمنا في أوطاننا اللهم أمنا في أوطاننا اللهم أمنا في أوطاننا اللهم يا أرحم الراحمين أحفظ نساءنا في كل مكان اللهم أحفظ نساءنا في كل مكان يا الله أما أرد شبابنا إلى ديننا مردا جميلا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم فرج عن إخواننا في الشام واليمن يا الله اللهم فرج عن إخواننا في الشام واليمن يا الله والشام يشمل فلسطين يا رحم الرحمين اللهم فرج عنهم في العراق وفي كشمير وفي كل مكان حيث يعانون في سبيلك يا رحم الرحمين اللهم جعل الاستقرار في مصر وفي ليبيا وفي هذه الأماكن يا رحم الرحمين اللهم جعل السنة في قلوبنا اللهم جعل حب السنة في قلوبنا يا رحم الرحمين اللهم جعلنا طائعين لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وتب علينا يا الله إنك قوت وقولك الحق إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه ولا تكفرون وأقيموا الصلاة لذكره